Today I'm gonna show you how to make Sad Boy Hyperpop EDM just like this. So if you're sitting at home really depressed at your computer, trying to get your feelings out, I'm here for you. I got you. Because I got some sauce that I think might help make some of your beats come to life. The first thing I want to talk about with this kind of vibe is layering. When I'm thinking of layering and these kind of future bassy type hyperpop vibes, I'm really just trying to figure out how can I fill out the frequency spectrum. That means having some high type sounds, some sounds that occupy that mid space, and then some low type bass sounds. A good go-to for this kind of stuff is a saw bass. A lot of different presets for this, but the way I usually like to do it, have a couple of saws. You can kind of mess with the detune unison up to seven or eight and then add ott and some distortion get it sounds like this one of the keys is to make sure that it's in the right octave when you do this because if it's up here instead of down here then it's not going to serve as a bass instrument it's going to be more of a mid-type bass thing and your instrumental is going to sound weak and lacking that oomph that hits you in the chest now as far as your mid-range instruments can go there are a lot of different ways to approach this you can do saw chords you can have guitars or one thing that i've been doing a lot recently is using these like ambient soundscapes but put distortion on them so they really just occupy a lot of those frequencies let me show you what i'm talking about here's what it sounds like in the drop See, it sounds kind of shitty on its own, but in the context of the mix, it's really doing a lot. And here's how to create something like that. In Serum, I have this chord progression, but what's really key here is the filter. Let me show you what that does. Here's before. Okay, so you could take some basic saw chords or like any sort of pad preset that you have, and you add this Format 3 filter, which you can find in Miscellaneous, and look what it does. Damn, yeah, it just makes it crazy. And then what you can do is just resample it. Take a piece of it and then just drop it into your project just like that. And now you've got some really sick texture along with your bass. Next, I'm gonna talk about arpeggios because these are really good for this kind of music. Here's what it sounds like. If you're in Serum, an easy way to create an arp like this is just to go to oscillator A and then go to basic shapes and then either go to a triangle wave or a square wave and then copy those chords from the previous progression. And then you wanna throw in the arpeggiator. You can kind of mess with the rate and gate to taste. The next thing I usually do is use some sort of noise to occupy that top end. What I find is that if I'm working with people that aren't using some sort of white noise is that their mix lacks a sort of crispy, modern, professional sound. There are a couple different ways to do this. First is just to use a sample. You could just grab a white noise, drag it into your DAW, and then copy and paste it wherever you want it to play. Notice how I'm only putting it where it's matching with the chords. The way that I usually end up doing it is in Serum. And so the way to do that is just go to Serum, kind of just mess with a lot of the different noises. A couple of my favorites are this art pink, bright white, and then and this sh1 noise and so on this track i'm using arp pink noise and then mess with the eq because we only want that top end got a little imaging going kind of sounds like shit but does a lot in the mix and that's something to always remember is that just because something sounds bad on its own doesn't mean that it's not a good fit for your track next are lead sounds and i really like to use these to accent the harmony in the song so i have a couple going on right now one's with serum this actually sounds like trash, but once again, just I'm just looking for a little bit of texture. The one that makes more sense is this one. Kind of just a typical saw type thing, but you can notice how it's occupying a lot of these mid frequencies right here. And lastly, I've got a little guitar doing this really kind of twinkly lead. And that was just me taking this loop right here and chopping it up. Now that you've got all your layers going, what you really need are some drums. Also, if you're looking for some samples, make sure to check out my kits below. They're completely free. First, you need a fat kick, then you need a snare. Something cool to do with snares though is add different layers. One type of layer that I end up using a lot is just taking a basic clap, and then adding some effects to it. Got a little hyper reverb, drum buzz saturator, little auto filter, and then this plugin called Crush doing some big crushing. Which sounds weird once again, but in the context of the track, just adds more texture. Check it out. Only. You can really hear how it gives like an ambient kind of like crush sound to the snare. Something you can also experiment with is using a different snare for beats two and four. This just adds a little bit of variation to your beat. One thing that is so crucial in this kind of stuff is the use of sidechain. <coughs> the way I like to do this is just to set up an audio track labeled sidechain. Make sure to set it to in, because if not, 
you're not gonna get any sound. And then I like to use Shaper Box with the MIDI trigger set to one shot, but there are a lot of different plugins that do this, LFO tool, Kickstart, or you can just use the stock Ableton Glue Compressor or a normal compressor. Any of these will help get you that effect. Now you're gonna send all the tracks that you wanna be sidechained. And basically that's all of them, except for the drums and sometimes your crash if you have one. So as you can see, got the bass, got the guitars, and then the synths all going here. And what this is gonna do is duck the volume of all the instruments every time the kick hits. And the way our Shaper Box plugin knows when the kick hits is we're gonna send it some information using a kick MIDI trigger. And to do this, all you do is take the MIDI of your kick and then just change the output to side chain. And after that, it should work. Next, you need a sad boy type vocal. Something about being really isolated or depressed. Because I'm lonely. A lot of times I like to dirty these vocals up. A little bit of overdrive, a little bit of OTT, maybe some altar boy, you know the vibes. And then after all that process, all the layering, all the vocals, all the emotional turmoil just coming out on the microphone, you should get a little something like this. Because I'm lonely. Appreciate you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If there are any other videos that you'd like to see or any ways that I can help, make sure to let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram. Regardless of anything though, keep vibing and making dope music and I'll see you next time. Love you.